to edit any of these values or to edit any of the values in the program at all, what you do is you pull down A and then you do this to get. So if I want to change that tempo from 128 to 129, I would just pull down A, press right. But so if you press up and down, you can adjust it by an order of tens. So you can go from 90, 91 to 101. So yeah, so that's basically how you adjust the different values of the thing. Um, so that is your tempo. Um, you can do a lot of other stuff in here too, like adjust the color scheme, or adjust like the font. But I never really did that for super normal. Um, you can also load and save songs on the screen too, but uh, just focus on your stuff. So you go back to the song screen. Uh, the, like I said, these four channels represent the four um, generating channels of the Nintendo. You, uh, you have two pulse channels which play um, different kinds of square waves. Uh, the difference between a pulse wave and a square wave is that a square wave has what's called a 50% duty cycle. For the, if you imagine the sound wave at the top, and down to the bottom, and over, and it spends an equal amount of time both on and off. Uh, whereas the pulse wave, that amount of time, that ratio is different. So with the Game Boy, you can have either what's called a 12.5 duty cycle, where it spends 12.5% of the time on, and you know, whatever the rest of it is, maybe whatever. Um, and, or 25%, 50%, or 75%. Um, so then you have the wave channel, which is pretty complicated, but what it basically does is it allows you to define what kind of sound wave you want. And you can draw in any shape that you want. And it has a screen that actually does it for you, kind of, um, to make it a little bit easier. But that's a really complicated screen. Anytime you hear anything that's like really cool with the Game Boy, it's usually on this channel. And it's usually by like switching between different uh, kind of waves really fast. Um, and the last one is a noise channel, which generates like untuned white noise. Some systems, the noise actually sounds like it's pitch because it's vibrating so fast or whatever, but with the Game Boy, it doesn't actually like really produce pitches. Um, so it's just like white noise, like if you, you know, turn a TV on it, if you live in the 90s. Um, so in order, or on this screen is where you have all of your musical parts. This is where you like arrange and lay out all the parts to your song. So let's create a part to one of the songs. Um, to create a part, to, to create sort of anything, um, you first highlight exactly where you want it to create it. So let's just start right at the top. And if I just double click A, it'll create what's called a chain. So this is chain number one. Uh, so to actually edit the musical info inside that, you would hold down select as that one particular one is highlighted and you press right. And you can see in the little map, the C is highlighted now, so now we're on the chain screen. Um, if we had a different chain, selected like chain two, we would have gone to the chain two screen. Uh, so a chain is made up of different phrases. If you're musically inclined, a phrase is just a measure of music. Um, and so you can create a new phrase just by double tapping it down. Like that. And now we can go over to the phrase screen. And so this is where you'd actually write out the song. You'd write out the, the notes of the song. Um, if I were to hit A now, Left and right is increments of one, up and down is usually like 10 or an octave or you know some level up from that. So it's sort of right out is a little scale. Um, to delete something, if you press B, hold down B and then tap A and delete it. Um,
probably could start right now, start with play what I have. That's pretty boring. Um, all of these, the sounds that you're hearing are linked to instrument number zero. What I can do is press select again, go to right, go right, see the eye and the map is highlighted around the instrument, zero, zero page. Um, this is how you edit the sound of that particular instrument. So you can change the name of it. Um, by pressing A, it brings up this little menu to you can change it to whatever. Um, you can just write all lightning bolts. <laughs> so one thing that's cool about LCJ, a really easy way to learn how to make cool sounds with it, is the fact that when you're on this instrument screen, you can just hit start. Um, it will loop what you were playing, and then you can sort of edit these values, and you can actually hear in like live how those how the editing will change the sound, which is kind of cool. Um, which I'll show you in a second. But the first thing that you can edit is the envelope of the instrument, which the I don't know, Jim, you wanna you know exactly how that works. Uh, well, specifically in LSDJ, uh, the first digit of your envelope in this case, which is A is the volume at which the note will begin playing. And the second digit, 8, uh, is the speed at which the volume of the note will either rise or fall. 8 is neutral. 8 will play indefinitely until you go to something else. If you go down, it'll fade like a dan, like if you pluck a guitar. If you bring it up the other way, it'll rise like a swell. But in order to get that to work, you have to start it with a lower volume. Yeah. So basically, I'll edit some of the values of it, and you can sort of hear how that changes the sound. So I'll just hit play. So you can hear how that makes the note much shorter. Um, if I were to make the first note, or the first number lower, and then raise the next one, you can sort of hear how it like swells a little bit.
basically that's how you would write out a, a musical part. You'd come up with your melody or whatever. Um, I'm going to delete this. <laughs> I have one. Yep. <laughs> um, okay, so let's do the wave. Sure. Does anybody have any questions at all? Hmm? Carl? No. You got anything to say? Um, no. <laughs> um, actually, let's talk about the noise channel. I got a lot to say about the noise channel. I did. You just look at um, like Daniel Cannon. No, that was a wave channel. I don't I think that there is, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> 
Yeah, one thing that's actually really cool, I just started doing recently, is when you buy LSDJ, we actually get access to every version of LSDJ that was ever released. And so you can download the very first one that came out. You can sort of see like incrementally how it's changed and grown over the years. And so it's actually kind of cool to try to write songs in like the first version that came out in 2001, because it's so much different than, uh, than the way this is. Um, but, <coughs> no questions? Um, next thing I can create is a uh, kick drum, like a bass drum, to sort of finish out the, the drum set that we have here. Um, if I double tap A on here, I can create a new little piece. Um, and let's put a note in. Does anybody here have a good kick drum sound they'd like to use? Do you want to do it? Yeah. sound I usually use. Um, we ship the note up to C5 and then I want to make, I usually make it the loudest and then that square and then my kick sound gets into tables which he hasn't explained but basically you run through um, a bunch of different commands so you can use volume commands, uh, transpose commands and then these normal commands. And mine, um, mine, mine uses a pitch shift command, which um, for really high values, it shifts it the sound down. And then uh, for lower values, it shifts it up. And then I tend to throw a kick or a kill command here. So that stops the sound at that point. And the drum sounds like that pretty much. Um, if you play with the octaves, you can get different sounds, but then you have to adjust it, otherwise you get the clipping sound in there. That's pretty much the kick sound I use in everything. <laughs> it's pretty consistent. Cool. Um, let's see. So, you can sort of put in a little piece and if I press select, Sort of harsh and like biting the sound will get. 
Um, and I can sort of like copy these and sort of paste them around. And so the more like abstract and weird the, the shape looks, the more abstract and weird basically distortion. Yeah. Um, so if, unless you're you know a genius, you don't know what the sound looks like that you're going for. Um, so what you can do is use the synth screen. So it says this is synth zero, so if I press select enough, you can use the synth screen to edit your sounds instead. Um, so right now if I change what kind of starting starting weight you want, and you go back and look over here, it's, it's changed it to this. This is sort of like an easier way to edit those sounds, which is kind of cool. Um, if I change this from manual to once, basically what it's going to do is it's going to play through 16 frames of this audio, or 16 frames of this wave, like in succession, every time a note is triggered. Um, and you can change how those waves all look on the <coughs> so, like besides like more drums and stuff because I mean just like come up with like a uh, I mean sure I can probably throw something together real quick I guess I want to <sighs> hold this because yeah. I was recording the thing you know okay. very similar here, but it kind of adds, it doesn't quite act like you'd expect. It's the same sort of theory, but you got to get a little trial and error. It can trigger distortion at different resonances, which can or cannot be cool. Wait, I'm going to learn how to use this controller. I use the PSP. Oh, you I have the control scheme, like, different. Oh, you meant the um, So I'm just increasing the volume here, because I just like the, oops, the, uh, I usually use the wave channel for bass, so you can actually change the volume. But uh, I'm not like an audiophile or anything, so I usually just cut it off to 30, but you can hear the difference on uh, between uh, 30 and what it was at 10. <coughs> on that wave I made. Mean. Yeah, I'm good. I'll change your table a little bit. So. <laughs> well, you could do it in the, the pulse, uh, pulse channel, too, and that, mm -hmm. like... Yeah, so you can 
sort of get these little buff things, um, change the active mode to make things better. Now you have the second channel here, it's called the transpose channel. So basically any note that you uh, put in here, it's basically adding to whatever, like... It increments in steps. Yeah. And so if I were to hit play right now, it's all zero, so it's not modifying that original pitch in any way. But if I were to adjust the <coughs> you can now hear that little, for like one little hiccup, Changing in one little tick, it's changing pitch slightly. So you know, does it only really transpose up steps, or do you transpose, you can transpose down? down too? Yeah. Um, I think that the cutoff is like any note that's above seven F, any note that's below seven. If any note that's above it, it's going to transpose down. Any note that's, I think so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So um, what you can do is sort of write out a chord. So the way a chord would be. And now we get into the music. Sort of the first note it. to the second note. Um, and then you have a distance of three uh, semitones, or three half steps from your from the third of it to the, to the fifth. So you go one, two, three, four. No, no, it's not. And then you go up one, two, three. <coughs> I'm going to use a hop command like those guys did. And so basically, what it's going to do is it's going to play the pitch unmodified. Zero, and it's going to up it to four, going up to the major third, and then it's going to play the seven, which is the fifth of the chord. So you hear it? Real, real quick, I don't think we mentioned even what tables were. Yeah. Just really, really yeah. quick. Um, you should probably get a yeah. little background of that. Sure. Um, so basically what a table is, it's a batch of commands that you can have apply to every note played by a specific instrument. Like if you wanted your note to have a vibrato on it, and you wanted it to change volumes or something like that every single time that note played. It's sort of a way to get more complicated sounding instruments. Um, and so originally, in the first version of LCJ, it was just called an arpeggio table. And it didn't really have the other stuff, other kinds of commands or anything like that. So, um, so yeah, it's just basically running through everything you put on here every time the note's played. And it runs through at, at the speed that the game works. Yeah. Yeah, those are ticks, right? Yeah. yeah. If you've used any other DAWs, it's kind of like, you know, automation where you can control different parameters over time. It's kind of like that on a much smaller, like on an individual note scale. Yeah, so you can write all different kinds of chords and you use those major sound chords. Yeah, it's not simple. Um, <coughs> another thing you can do is have it, you can do what's called pulse width modulation which is where you're going to change the duty cycle of the instrument um, like pretty rapidly, so you'll get sort of more complicated sounds. Uh, what I'll do up here, um, you would use a W command, which stands for wave, wave command, so you can change sort of the wavelength of it. So I can start with 12.5, um, go up to 25, and then do a 50, and I'm going to have it hop. So so now when I play it, you sort of get really cool sounds. Um, sort of like swelling, swelling sounds too. Um, yeah, so 
So we talked a little bit about doing percussion using the noise channel and using the pulse channel. Uh, so we've got this thing. So another thing that you can do with the wave channel for you know, you can really hear the it's still there. It's still there. When you when you do that, chain four still exists. You can always go back to it. Um, another neat thing that you can do with the wave channel is that you can actually play back samples. And in order to do that, So on our instrument screen here, we're going to do something a little bit different. Up here, you can see our instrument type is wave, which is one we went over before. If you go over here, there's one more type of instrument that's only available in this channel, and this is called kit. And people who have used <coughs> drum machines or whatever, this is probably going to be extremely familiar to you. You can load up two sample sets at any given time. So let's do the 707. It comes with a bunch of sampled, fascinating. Farm animals. Farm, yeah, I was gonna do and the ghetto. <laughs> and the ghetto. Uh, um, so now if we go back here, you see that we have our, our we've changed to a sort of more of a step sequencer view. So
<laughs> Show them the ghetto. All right. You can also play two samples at once and try to sort of like, you know, mix them together. start at the wrong time, you're not going to mess it up. It'll wait until it flips over to your next, so, you know, it, it'll wait until it finishes the chain to play. Uh, but if you double tap it, it'll start playing it like at the next available opportunity. You can also hold select and start. I'm a big Ableton fan. Let me start on Ableton. 
That's um, minutes. And then the total amount of time, like I've been using this cartridge at all. Like here's the, all the all the stuff that's put together. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Only two days. <laughs> um, you spend a lot of time editing, like you don't realize it, and then you yeah. look at your total time, and you're like, I've just we, spent sure weeks. Make sure you say it too. Same yeah. stuff. Look at all those other save names, noise, oh, lightning bolts. <laughs> they used to be a drum. I probably name them like good things because I never named my stuff <laughs> well and then I never remembered what they were. Like one was just like A, 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 P. Yeah. What was that? It's kind of nice if you go and open it and they're like, oh yeah. 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 <laughs> that was some surprise. Um, do either of you guys have any Game Boy cartridges or anything to show us all? I got two shelves. No, that was my game. My phone. The sound is really good. There's some live mode. See, I do all my songs in live mode so I can trigger stuff separately. That's what it's basically doing. Yeah. Like that part is just going to loop over and over again once I tell someone about it.
good as shit, man. <laughs> yeah, <Yay>, ghetto! <laughs> Basically, you can be Starscream. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's like... Every time it plays, it's always going to be randomly different. 